The Antikythera mechanism is an ancient Greek mechanical device found to have been used to calculate the position of celestial bodies, namely the Sun, the Moon, the five known planets at the time, eclipse cycles, and other celestial cycles, circulating in association with the Greek zodiac circle and the Egyptian calendar. It's the culmination of over 80 fragments discovered in 1901 in a shipwreck off the coast of Antikythera in Greece which included numerous bronze gears with finely tuned teeth, plus dials and even writings indicating to its primary function. This may be just the first of this type of device to be found, or perhaps it is the only one we'll find as it's been over a hundred years since its initial finding. In November 2018, archaeology.org published about another search that was conducted in 2017 using customised metal detectors around the same area. They found an arm from an unknown bronze statue, and a bronze plate decorated with a bull which was especially notable, as it was about three inches in diameter, had four metal arms, holes for pins, and especially being decorated with a bull in the middle of the plate, it seems to have probably been part of the Antikythera mechanism, and possibly even part of one of the display plates for the device. The ship it was discovered in that sunk was dated to around 70 BC, so the wreck has been sitting at the bottom of the sea for over 2,000 years. Other notable items of value and statues were also discovered around the wreck, so it doesn't appear to have been just a routine trade voyage. The Antikythera mechanism was found half disintegrated as well, but enough was found to piece together the puzzle over time. The size of the device is only thought to be about the size of a shoebox, so reasonably compact. And when I first heard about this device years ago, the first thing it reminded me of is an orrery, which is a celestial model usually ornamental, but can be functional if your orrery is accurately made, and is basically the same concept as the Antikythera mechanism. I personally own two orreries, one which includes the Sun, Earth and Moon, and another which includes the entire solar system up to Pluto, back in the days when Pluto was still classed as a big boy planet. They're both brass, both accurately constructed with a year counter, However, there is a misalignment somewhere on the full solar system one so it doesn't currently run smoothly. And I black tacked a screw here on the Earth Moon one years ago which I'm pretty sure is to secure a part inside that's also preventing this one from moving smoothly together. And yes, they can both be plugged in. Plus there's a dial on the bottom to adjust the speed of rotation on both of them. Anyway, they're only ornamental to me now really, but I may get the urge to fix the misalignment sometime in the future to make them both functional again. But as you can probably tell, even looking at the configuration of the external gears, this thing is highly refined, so I'm sure you can probably also immediately see the similarities between the Antikythera mechanism and these auraries just like I did. It's just the device is configured to calculate different cycles and doesn't have the rods, arms and represented planet models but this is what the different display plates on the Antikythera mechanism were most likely for, where there were probably pointers on dials on multiple faces following the gear configurations, just like arms on a clock. Even though this is the only ancient device of its kind found with the intricate bronze interlocking gear system, there were numerous devices of this kind written about in that same time period, and as Britannica states, the widespread existence of such devices can be inferred from the references in Greco-Roman literature, particularly in the descriptions left by Marcus Tullius Cicero around the 1st century BCE, that stretch from Archimedes around the 3rd century BCE, to a poetic reference in the late 4th or early 5th century CE. So, since the Romans, this technology and knowledge seemed to disappear until the use of gears and clocks well over a millennia later. And the first celestial mechanical calculator like this wasn't built again until around the mid-14th century, with it still being a few hundred years later than that until the first actual planetarium-type model was made. So no wonder it was impressive that some people in ancient times actually figured out how to create some of these devices. So, where are all the other similar mechanical devices from the time? We don't really know, but they may have just been very rare or expensive, or perhaps there were only a few people with the knowledge to actually create these. Or perhaps the majority of them were actually later melted down for some other purpose, as they would be majoritarily bronze, and perhaps extensively decorated with other metals. As the only one we've discovered so far was found on a ship at sea, 
which was apparently identified as a trading ship, then this to me indicates that either it was being delivered to someone perhaps of importance or high stature, or perhaps it belonged to the ship captain, as a celestial calculator paired up with a map could serve as essentially the world's first manual GPS, and could be pretty accurate if utilised by an experienced navigator. Through X-rays and examinations of the device, approximately 35 gear locations have been identified, with some complete gears missing and some in pieces. It's also believed to be operated by a hand crank, which makes sense, as you can even usually operate modern mechanical orreries by manually turning the gears on any point of the model as it's all connected. The Antikythera mechanism has had numerous attempts of modern reconstruction, and although some people will lead you to believe this is an ancient, advanced, long-lost computer of sorts, it's definitely not some advanced technology that couldn't have been achieved at the time by an intelligent and skilled person with the means. The writings on the device and the calculations are all related to that time period, plus the numerous ancient writings referencing similar devices even up to 200 years before the dating of this mechanism, then it's likely that they were just rarely made and this may be the only physical specimen that we ever discover. It was probably lucky it was lost on a ship for thousands of years at the bottom of the sea. The fact that this is the only one we've discovered really makes me wonder why none have been found inland. Maybe a few were made mainly for aiding ship navigation then, and perhaps other devices similar to this are still in shipwrecks out at sea that haven't been discovered yet. But if there were ones owned as ornaments or scientific devices inland, then were they all melted down and converted to something else then? It does seem like a bit of a reach to suggest that, but we have nothing else to go on as of yet either. And the fact that we have so much archaeological artefacts from Greek and Roman times and feel we have a fairly good picture of the time period, the culture, the knowledge and the accomplishments, then if these types of devices were actually widespread, then you would think we would have found at least fragments of others, especially being made of metal, We've discovered one, so we know they existed. We have written references of similar devices up to 200 years before the Antikythera mechanism was dated to. And that's it. Where are the others that existed? And were bronze gears used in any other types of devices at the time we've yet to discover? I really hope we find more of these types of devices to help paint a picture of how they were utilised fully in ancient times. But even though it was an extremely impressive device for the time period, it wasn't an impossible feat by any means. All the materials were workable materials at the time. The information that it appears to calculate is all knowledge known at the time. No electricity or anything was needed, just a hand crank manipulating a series of gears. So I think it's at least definitive that it was an early type of orrery. But was it just for particular people? Or was it an educational item? Or may it also have been used alongside maps at sea to kind of work as an ancient form of manual GPS? Especially for long distance navigators who were venturing far from visible landmarks, and especially those who didn't have all the celestial positionings and movements memorised. Similar in a way to how we don't learn driving routes as in-depth as we rely more heavily on our modern GPS systems. It is still rather curious that no other portable metal geared device has been discovered with anywhere near this level of intricacy from Greek or Roman times or prior. It's not surprising that it's looked at as possibly a form of ancient advanced technology by many. But like most things, when you take a closer look at the details, yes, it's very impressive, but entirely possible from the time period it was dated to. It's just a shame this technology didn't have chance to start evolving until over 1300 years later. Just imagine if this technology had evolved throughout society sooner, and we'd ended up going into the Industrial Revolution sooner, and gah, you can only use your imagination. With that being said, I'm going to wrap up the video there. So what do you think? Do you think the Antikythera mechanism was used alongside maps as an ancient form of manual GPS? Was it just lost packed away with the statues and other valuables on the trade voyage? Or do you have an argument for it actually being evidence of advanced knowledge and technology? Well, please leave a comment with your thoughts. I recently hit 2,000 subscribers, so thank you all for that. Each thousand subscribers is a milestone at the moment. And I would also like to give a very special thank you to my first Patreon members. I'm not sure if people like their names being read out, so I'll just edit the end screen to credit your support for the time being. But thank you so much again. If you would like to support me for as little as $2 a month, please head on over to my Patreon page. I will eventually be offering exclusive member perks. 
but currently I'm still trying to get my channel off the ground as I also work full time and have a life. <laughs> so it's sometimes a struggle just trying to get the one video out a week that I try and aim for. And I always try to make thoroughly thought out videos as I value quality over quantity. Plus I also have plans to start a space and science channel in a similar format called Astrologic if I get to the stage of being able to do YouTube full time especially. So thank you again. Please share the video, like, subscribe and remember to take care of yourselves out there.